This one goes out to you, baby. What's cracking, big da whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome, Pike, to the channel. Welcome, Pike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dog's got to eat, as you can see, it's spelled up on the bike board over there. It's Friday, and every Friday we do rankings. We talk running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. Every once in a while, I fuck around, throw a quarterback or a defense in there that I like. I tell you what, it's so hard not to look. There's a lot of action going outside my window right now. From this point forward, I will not look outside my window for the remainder of this video, I promise. Ooh, it's hard. It is hard. It's like, it's like, I feel like Bill O'Brien, first and 10, and someone tells you you can't run the ball up the middle right now. I'm itching, but I feel good today. I feel real good today. I think you're going to get some electricity. It's going to be an electric factory right now. Headquarters, rankings, week six. If at any point, which you've already probably hit this point, you just want me to shut up and you just want to see my rankings, they are available. Patreon.com forward slash BDGE. Season long rankings every week. Dynasty rankings, myself, Mike's, and Noah's included in there. Saturday, QA live stream. We're going to be continuing the live stream, the Q&As, into the offseason. They're going to be dynasty focused once the fantasy football season ends. Myself, Mike, and Noah are going to be hopping on a trifecta live stream. You also got access to our Discord channel. Patreon.com slash BDGE saves you a lot of time from me yelling at you. I'm ready to roll. So without further ado, let us tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling. Let's eat. Okay. 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 So we're just going to kind of run down the running bikes. And, and as I see guys that I think are worth mentioning, or there are notes on him that, you know, maybe he's not a sit or start or fucking anything, but there are some things that you should know. I'm going to blurt them out. One is this sparkling ice stuff is fucking phenomenal, by the way. This is a kiwi strawberry. I feel it goes straight into my bloodstream. It's giving me energy. It's giving me life. I just looked outside the window. Fuck. James Conner, getting that feature workload, man. It's been a weird season for him in terms of the workload and, and the ankle thing in the beginning of the season, but he's he's fully biked. James Conner's here. The reason I have him listed is because he might be without three of his five starting offensive linemen. They're very, very banged up on that offensive line. And they're playing against Cleveland, and Cleveland has not been a pushover this year against the run. They're allowing 3.9 yards per carry, which is tied for eighth best in the league. They are the 11th best run defense for both football outsiders and PFF. They're good in real life against the run. They've allowed the eighth fewest fantasy points to the running back position. And uh, since week one, when J.K. Dobbins got in the end zone twice, you know, those small scores where everyone got real excited about him and then fucking Viagra wore off and there's no more erection there for J.K. Dobbins owners, they haven't let up much on the ground. So this will low-key be a tough matchup for James Conner. Uh, obviously he's not someone that you're going to be sitting, but the ceiling is probably a little bit lowered. Uh, so keep an eye on the injury reports for that offensive line right above them, right above James Conner. I would have two borderline RB ones. You have Joe Mixon, you have Miles Sanders, right? Pure involvement, opportunity, share weighted opportunity, just their roles in their respective offenses. They're RB ones, but you have Mixon playing at Indianapolis and we're probably going to get a similar game to him that we did last week where he does his Joe Mixon impression and averages like two and a half yards per carry. Okay, he has not been good on the ground whatsoever. And this is one of the toughest run defenses in Indianapolis. They have been for the last two years. We've been saying this week in and week out. And you have Miles Sanders versus Baltimore. Now, Miles Sanders obviously had the big week last week. He had a, a one-yard touchdown and he had the 74-yard touchdown. Outside of the 74-yard touchdown, though, he struggled on the ground. And this is something that we might see. So if Mixon doesn't get his eight targets that he did last week, this could be a tough game for him in fantasy. Miles Sanders, if he doesn't break away a big play, Baltimore is going to be in that bike field all day long, and it could be a problem for Sanders. So you have these two RB1s based off pure volume going against teams that are basically ranked top five in every run defensive statistical category that you can get your fingers tips on. Okay. Miles Gaskin. Well, I, I guess we can rewind and talk about Le'Veon Bell for a second. So I'm filming this Thursday at 12 28 p.m so a little bit after noon we don't have any word on where Le'Veon bell is actually going to sign right now apparently it is 
now down to KC, Buffalo, and Miami. And uh, LQ, a good friend of the show, tweeted out something funny. He was like, if he wants to win, he'll sign with KC. If he wants a shot at being the primary back, he'll go to Buffalo. If he just wants to party and do coke all weekend, he will go to Miami. I don't know where he's going to land. I would assume it's not going to be Miami. I'm not even really sure about the contract situation. I was probably going to make an individual video about Bell where I go a little bit more in depth once the dust actually settles and, you know, talk about contract, talk about the impacts it has. But I'm not going to sit here and speculate and talk about the impact on 10 different players, depending on where he might land. But he's going to land somewhere. And it's probably by the time you guys watch this, he probably has already signed somewhere. So I'll cover that in an individual video or on the Saturday live stream, which I told y'all, if you are Patreon members, you get access to on Saturday and I will dive into the Le'Veon Bell situation. If it's not Miami, I feel like at this point, Miles Gaskin needs to be a pretty much must start running back too, um, because his involvement, man, week in and week out since week two. So for discounting week one, where we didn't know what was going on with the bike field there since week two. He is number 10 overall in running back opportunities. Since week three, he is number eight overall in running back opportunities. Opportunities just targets plus carries. They decided to make Jordan Howard a healthy scratch last week. They dominated the 49ers, so I would highly, highly doubt that they just randomly make Jordan Howard uh, active again this week. I think Howard's time in Miami is coming gone already. Very, 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 very quick. Similar to animal in bed sheets. Gaskins is catching passes. And he is now the goal line back there. So he's getting carries, he's getting valuable carries, and he's getting valuable targets. Like there's nothing, there's there's no holes to poke in Gaskin's game anymore now that we're seeing the Miami offense actually having good games here, right? I think the reason I hated Jordan Howard in the offseason was he was going to be the early down grinder and the goal line back in an offense that we didn't expect to score much. And now they're, they're scoring, you know, pretty well. And uh, he's not even on the fucking field. It's Miles Gaskin taking that role. Now, I tweeted this out yesterday. The only running backs with four plus targets in every game this season, it's Alvin Kamara, it's Aaron Jones, and it's Miles Gaskin. So those are very, very, very valuable opportunities. We want our players, we want our running backs specifically to get targets, okay? Now, the other valuable part of fantasy is scoring touchdowns. When you look at those three backs, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Miles Gaskin, Jordan Howard is second in the NFL in goal line carries inside the five-yard line. Aaron Jones is fifth. Alvin Kamara is eighth. With Jordan Howard as a healthy scratch, those are going to Miles Gaskin, assuming Bell does not land in Miami. Over the last two weeks, Miles Gaskin has gotten seven red zone carries, four inside the 10 yard line, and last game, most importantly, he got the goal line carry and took it in for a touchdown. So, big news for Miles Gaskin. He got targeted inside the 10, five yard line a lot, too. He got tackled, I think, on like the two yard line multiple times last game. So, it could have been a much, much bigger game. They go against the Jets. Uh, so the Jets are allowing the fifth most fantasy points to opposing running backs this year. Gaskin seems like a must start running back two with, with some pretty solid upside going into this week. I got Adrian Peterson coming off the bye all the way at running back 23. I feel like I'm probably going to regret this man, but as long as Patricia's fat ass is in Detroit, this is what we're going to continue to see. Adrian Peterson was signed by the lions on September 6th. That was like four days before the fucking season started. Hyped about Swift, he gets hurt, and then you had to pull the reins back, and then they sign AP, and then you're like, wow, we're really fucked on the Swift train. Peterson has had 13-plus opportunities in all but one game this year. Swift nor carry on. Yeah, I threw a fucking nor in there to let y'all know I'm intellectual. Neither of them, neither of them have a game this year with more than 10 opportunities. Adrian Peterson's volume compared to those two is absurd, and it's probably going to continue doing it, Okay. And for the most part, with AP, I feel like over the last few years, he's had a lot of big games where he gets like 20 carries. And a lot of the time, they're in games where we expect that to happen. Whatever team he's on, we expect them to either be in the game or be kind of dominating the game script. And those are the games that he, he's not one of those guys where like you start him against a shitty team and all of a sudden he doesn't get the workload. It feels like every time we want him to get the workload or we expect him to, he ends up doing that. So this is a game where that could happen. They're facing Jacksonville. Jacksonville is allowing the eighth most fantasy points to running backs on the year. He's not a must start for me, you know, and the ceiling isn't high, but he's probably got a floor in, in today's today's demographic in today's economy. The running back landscape is fucked. OK, it's like the real life economy, fantasy football, running back economy, fucking Spider-Man meme at each other, man. It's a problem. And AP could solve that problem for you. Right. There's a lot of injured running backs. There's Chubb, there's Eckler, there's C-Mac, there's maybe Dalvin Cook if they end up fucking playing because Atlanta's out here tanking, pretending that their players have COVID and shit. Let's go. Trevor Lawrence season. Am I, is, is it too early to be excited about Trevor Lawrence coming to the Falcons? We're 0-5. I feel like, I don't know, like something something in my mind tells me we're just, we're not going to end up getting the number one pick. We'll probably end up with like the number seven pick and 
draft a fucking D tackle who stinks and doesn't help our team whatsoever. I hope Dan Quinn, like, low-key gave it to everybody on the way out, and then we get penalized for it, and we have to forfeit the next month of games. I'm ready. I'm ready for full-on tank mode. We've got nothing else to play for this year. If we can get Trevor Lawrence, I'm in. I'm all the fuck in. I'm all the way the freak in. I don't know where that came from. But as you can see, I had, had a lot of Trevor Lawrence pent-up venting I needed to do there. Just Falcons overall. Adrian Peterson, this landscape, this economy, you could do worse than like an eight-point floor. If he happens to tumble into the end zone, you know, you're looking at a nice RB2 finish for him. And I'm actually going to be starting him this week, man. I'm, I put my money where my mouth is, and I usually end up losing it, but the money's there. I have a league where I have C-Mac, I have Eckler, I picked up Justin Jackson on a buy, so I have to throw AP in, I, I don't know if it's in my RB2 slot or my flex, but, but he is in there. He's in there, okay? So he's my RB23 this week and should probably be considered more of a, a running back three, but the economy decides. The market is the market is the market, okay? AP is not is not the market mover. The Cardinals bike field is what we would call fucked. I got Kenyon Drake at running back 20. I got Chase Edmonds, I think, at running back 25. Maybe a mistake, but until we really have confirmation that Edmonds is like the more, you know, until he's actually playing more and not just producing more, I think you ha you still have to continue putting Drake above Edmonds uh, for fantasy at least. And I think that's going to be the case for, I don't know, another week, another two, three weeks. Who the fuck knows right now? Kingsbury obviously still likes Drake for whatever reason. Over the last month, Edmonds' carry counts are three, four, three, and three. I don't know if we've actually realized that because we're getting excited about him getting into the end zone him getting the passing down work, but those are his carry totals, three, four, three, and three. Now, again, he's getting the passing work and you might think, okay, they're going against Dallas. This is like the perfect fade of Kenyon Drake to put Chase Edmonds in there because he's the pass catching back, but they've actually been very, 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 very good at stopping pass catching running backs. And I don't, I mean, that that's, that's a very, very loose terminology of the word good. It's more likely because their secondary is fucking terrible and the opposing teams can just throw it to their wide receivers or their tight ends whenever the fuck they want. And that leads to running backs not getting targeted. But so far, they've allowed the fourth most rushing yards to running backs on the year. But they've only allowed, through five games, 18 total catches and 100 receiving yards. Okay? So that's 3.6 receptions per game. Third fewest in the NFL. 20 yards of receiving per game to running backs is the second fewest in the NFL. So be it by sheer force of terrible secondary play but the running backs are not getting a lot of work in the passing game they're getting beaten on the ground and the one who's getting the carries is Kenyon drake so i still have drake ranked above edmonds for right now another tough 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 by field to decipher is the patriots we have damian harris coming off his big debut right 17 for 100 on the ground for me this week he's not anything more than a weak plex a week zivik Flex play, weak flex play, weak flex play, weak flex play. Say that shit 42 times real fast. He's my running back 28. Cam's going to be bike, right? He was activated off the COVID list. So he is starting. He is going to be playing against Denver. So goal line opportunities are going to be few and far between in this Patriots group of running bikes. Okay. Cam is the only player on the year with more than a single carry on the goal line. He has five of them. No other running back has more than a single one on the year. Rex Burkhead has been quietly very involved this year. He leads past running bikes, carries, targets, receptions. He leads all of them in that, okay? I know a lot of them have missed games, haven't played the full slate, but clearly Rex is very involved here, and I think he's going to continue to be. So while Damian got 17 carries, Rex Burkhead also got 11 and was involved in the passing game. So I think it's very possible that Harris sees 15 carries in this one against Denver. But it's it, it you're rolling the dice here with who's going to get a goal line carry. Is it going to be Damian Harris? Is it going to be Cam Newton? Is it going to be Rex Burkhead? Like, if you're just getting 15 carries for Damian Harris and like one, maybe two targets and no goal line carries, it's not a player you want in your lineup, obviously. The other thing is Denver's defense against the run has been legitimately very, 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 very strong. They are the number one overall graded run defense per PFF on the year. They have allowed the single fewest fantasy points to running backs on the year. So they have like 10 guys ranking their interior defensive linemen, their edge defenders, their linebackers and safeties, all graded out really, 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 really well in the run defense department, okay? So tough matchup for running backs, especially one who's a kind of one-dimensional like Damian Harris. I know he can catch a fucking ball. I get it. He's capable of catching a ball. They're not using him in that role. Tough matchup for a guy like Damian Harris who's going to get the majority of his fantasy points via the groundwork. So we're probably fading Damian Harris this week. 
Going a little bit further down, the run bike situation is J.D. McKissick. Now, he has eight targets in bike to bike games, so, like, take with that what you will. I love how, like, Antonio Gibson, the heat on him gets, it just, it, it's a weekly thing. He has a good game, and everyone loves him. He has a bad game, everyone fades him. And Gibson is who, who we know him to be. He is the early down guy. He'll probably get the goal line work, and he'll be semi-involved in the passing game, okay? But J.D. McKissick is the third down back. He's the two-minute drill back, the four-minute drill back, the guy who's getting... The targets. He's currently tied for fifth most targets among NFL running backs right now. And I mean, he stinks. He doesn't do shit with them. But I think I started him in a half PPR league last week. One that I have literally Eckler, C-Mac, Nick Chubb, Julio Jones, like everyone who's basically dead or on a bye. Um, I threw him in there and he got me like eight and a half points last week. I'm not excited to get him in there. But I think like if you're in a, in a pinch, he's definitely on your waiver wire and you could throw him in for like six to seven to eight to 40 fucking points. J.D. McKissick is a god. He's really like an anti-god. Not an anti-god, because I would, I guess, be the devil. But, like, he's he is J.D. Purgatory McKissick. We'll put it that way, okay? You could do worse, but let's move over to the wide receiver position. Wide receiver position. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. One, hit the motherfucking thumbs up button. That's my thinking number one, okay? If you've watched this long or listened this long, if you're on the podcast, make sure that you... Drop a rating, man. A five-star rating. It takes you two seconds to do it, and it takes me two days to make this video, to make this podcast, to research all these big facts that I'm throwing into your face holes. So if you're listening, please, a five-star rating and review would be beautiful. If you are watching on YouTube, just scroll down, hit the thumbs up button, and drop a comment. Let me know how much you hate me. Wide receiver cornerback matchups. So I usually do this at the start of my Saturday videos, the, uh, the Q&As that I do for Patreons. But I figured it makes a lot more sense to just throw these in here. So I'm going to start doing the shadow coverage chart, matrix, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And this is what we got for this week. So we're looking at guys who are expected to get shadow coverage. And this is per PFF. We have the cornerbacks rankings in terms of coverage rankings per PFF. And we have now included player profiles, cornerback coverage rankings. So if you go to playerprofile.com, you can search any wide receiver and it'll tell you who they're getting covered by that week and that, that cornerback's coverage rank. Or... If you sign up for their package on the website, uh, you will get access to their rankings. You will get access to the actual cornerback coverage rankings nicely listed for you. But I'm bringing them to you today. We've got Marquise Hollywood against Darius Slay. Darius Slay has been very, very, very good this year, right? And PFF's rankings are out of 115 qualified cornerbacks. Player profilers are out of 133 qualified cornerbacks. I don't know what the qualification standards are for either. It doesn't fucking matter. But you can see that everybody shadowing a wide receiver has been pretty damn good this year. Darius Slay on Marquise Brown. This could end up leading to a big Mark Andrews game, man. If Lamar doesn't want to force it to Marquise Brown... The Eagles are bottom five in terms of receptions, yards, touchdowns, and fantasy points allowed to the tight end. When I say bottom five, I mean they are bad at covering tight ends. So this could be a big target funnel game to Mark Andrews. Brown, for me this week, looks like more of a boom-bust, low-end wide receiver too. He'll probably need to hit on a big play against Darius Slay. I don't think he's going to be like the possession guy that goes seven for 85 and maybe a score. Uh, so he's my wide receiver 22 right now. Devontae Adams, finally bike on the field. Uh, going against Carlton Davis, who's been good, but listen, Samante Adams, if you if you have him, he's obviously back in your lineup. Mike Evans, really tough matchup this week. Jerry Alexander has been incredible. PFF's number one graded coverage cornerback on the year, number six per player profiler. Chris Godwin is expected to return. He returned to a limited practice on Wednesday. Um, you guys will have to obviously anticipate these reports going forward or you know, just keep an eye on them to see if Chris Godwin will be back on the field. I think he will be. So this... Lines up to be a game where Brady does not take a ton of deep shots down the field. You know, Green Bay's offense has been clicking, but Tampa Bay's defense is really good. So I don't expect Aaron Rodgers to throw up a 30 spot like he's been doing week in and week out. Could be a defensive battle here. It could be a game where Brady has a signature, you know, a lot of dump offs over the middle, a lot of Chris Godwin targets, a lot of maybe even Rob Gronkowski gets a little bit involved, a lot of ground game. The Packers are certainly a little bit more forgiving on the ground than they are through the air. So right now I have Chris Godwin, I believe, assuming he's playing, I have him at like wide receiver 10 or 11 and Mike Evans down at wide receiver 13. Tough, tough, tough matchup, but obviously Mike Evans is capable of scoring two touchdowns, even if it's on two fucking receptions. He's capable of the big play, just going over the top of Jared Alexander and kind of making his fantasy day produce just based off of one or two catches. So don't think you could sit him realistically, but just something to be cognizant of. Next up, we got AJ Brown versus Bradley Roby. Man, AJ Brown, official announcement. It's fucking bike. He is big bike. Love to see the king bike on the field, man. Love to see him 
running his routes, catching his his hands are so man. We get we miss him for like a month. We don't really see him play, and you start seeing guys like DK Metcalf and CD Lamb and these young guys balling out, and you forget just how good AJ Brown is and was last year. Man, that dude's hands are are something. Are, are it's like he has permanent stickiness onto his hands. As soon as it hits it, it just he's got like a he's got like you know what it, you know what he probably got he probably got gloves that have like little you know like gloves have like holes to get you some air venting. He's probably low key got like government issued a vacuum a vacuum under there, so it hits it, it sucks that shit up. That's what it looks like when AJ Brown's on the field, man. He don't drop shit. He is incredible i am glad to see him bike out there so Riley roby's been good man he is the only cornerback this year that has shadowed the opposing number one in every single game he's he's played well but he's not like a matchup that you need to fade guys from so brown is my wide receiver 12 i want to say for week six and he's someone that you should have in your lineup this is where things get tough man this is where things get tough terry mclaurin is on here and he goes against james radbury and james radbury has been every bit elite as a shadow coverage corner he is PFF's number two graded coverage cornerback this year. And as you could see by this tweet from the the Entertainer85, Juju, A-Rob, Ayuk, Woods, Cooper. The man has put in the work, okay? He came, he saw, he conquered. Badberry's been awesome. Obviously, Terry has too, but now he's dealing with not only the whole quarterback situation, Kyle Allen, Alex Smith, who knows who's going to be a starter. It's Kyle Allen if he's healthy, but I don't even know if that's a good thing for Terry McLaurin. And now you have this coverage against James Bradbury. It's really the only piece of the offense on the passing game that you need to be cognizant of if you're uh, an opposing defense, right? So if I'm a Terry owner, like I have him ranked as wide receiver 25 right now. So he's a low end wide receiver two, borderline wide receiver three for me in week six. I love Terry, but like you got to be objective about the situation and, and the task at hand, okay? We come here to produce results, and I don't know if we're going to get them from Terry, okay? And I need to tell you that. As someone who loves Terry, I would adopt it. He's I, he's younger than me, I think. Seems weird to say I can adopt him, considering like he would fuck the sh fuck me up. I meant to say that came out very wrong. He would fuck me up. He's 25. I got a couple years on him. I got to adopt him. I don't know what, like why I keep going on these tangents. What I'm trying to say is I love Terry, bro. I love him, but you got to not that you got to sit him this week. But there were probably a lot of plays that you would feel more comfortable going over Terry. And I'm here to tell you. I'm I'm just here to give you permission to tell you that it's okay. It's okay. Like I'm. This is goodwill, my goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. It's not your fault for sitting Terry McLaurin this week. I think we need to touch on Dallas a little bit, okay? So Dak's gone, right? Done for the year. Andy Dalton's coming in. And I think taking sample sizes too seriously is really dumb, especially when we're talking about just what Dalton had last week. But I figured I'd throw the big facts out there for you and let y'all decide going forward. Dalton attempted 11 passes on last week's game. Three to CeeDee Lamb. Three to Amari Cooper, three to Michael Gallup, two to Tony Pollard. So zero to Zeke, zero to Dalton Schultz. Here's the way I'm going to be looking at it. I still think the pecking order is the same, but it might be a little bit of a reset. It might be something where we see the target share shift a little bit, right? Maybe Dalton gets more comfortable. The chemistry, right? There's going to be new chemistry here between receiver quarterback. It's not going to be the exact same thing we saw from Dak giving Amar Cooper 16 targets, giving uh, CeeDee Lamb 8 to 10 targets, giving Michael Gallup like four targets, right? It might be a little bit of a reset in terms of the target share here. So I still see Amari Cooper as a clear alpha here. He's coming off a bad game, uh, but again, that was against James Bradbury, who shut down basically everyone he's lined up against. You have CeeDee Lamb, who I got, I got some big facts here for you on CeeDee Lamb. He ranks third in the NFL in terms of slot rate. He is running 93.2% of his snaps, of his routes, from the slot third highest rate in the nfl he leads the nfl with 36 targets from the slot he's tied for the nfl lead with tyler boyd 27 slot receptions and he leads the nfl with 395 receiving yards from the slot that's 91.2 percent of his total receiving yards coming from the slot so you love to see that right he typically gets the easiest matchup on a week-to-week -week basis you have cooper taking the one you have cd lamb running against the slot on the inside and that's why he continues to produce at a very high level then you have Michael Gallup, who's basically the forgotten man. But Andy Dalton did not forget about him, man. Gallup is the downfield threat right now, right? His, his Madden stamina would be fucking running out very quickly because he's just sh 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 he's just running straight seams. But Dalton locked onto him at the end of the game when that shit counted. And Gallup saw the three targets from Dalton. He turned him into three catches for 65 yards. They're playing against Arizona, right? So it's not, it's not a tough matchup by any means. And I have Cooper at wide receiver 11, which is probably conservative against Arizona because Patrick Peterson really has not been 
what we knew Patrick Peterson to be in his prime. I have CeeDee Lamb up at wide receiver 18 or 19, and I have Gallup around wide receiver 26, I believe. So the way I'm looking at it is I feel like people are, I'm actually lower than all three of these guys than ECR. I feel like they're being ranked ECR wise, expert consensus ranking as if Dak didn't get hurt. Like, listen, I understand that we think Dalton's going to be fine in the replacement of Dak and the supporting cast is there for him to be a good fantasy quarterback going forward. He's not Dak, though. He's not going to produce. He's not going to be throwing up 400 yards a game over here. OK, so that needs to factor into how you're looking at these Dallas wide receivers going forward. If, if Andy Dalton comes out and throws up 217 passing yards, is anyone going to be surprised? No. We're going to be disappointed, but we're not going to be surprised, right? So I think that, I, I think just the range of outcomes and what could happen with Andy Dalton at quarterback needs to be factored into these rankings, which is why, I mean, I still have Cooper as a wide receiver one, just a little bit lower than ECR. Same with CD Lamb, same with uh, Michael Gallup. Now, Gallup ranks number one overall in the NFL in total routes run through five games. And you can see all this up at Player Profile are all free, completely free information. He is third in yards per reception. His average depth of target is seventh. He's eighth in completed air yards and eighth in yards per target. He's a great deep threat, but it seems like we want him to turn into more of a possession receiver than the likelihood of it actually happening. So Cooper and Lamb continue to get the volume, I think. And overall, for as much as uh, if Gallup is on the field, right, number one in routes run for wide receivers right now in the entire NFL. He's only 34th or 35th in targets, I believe. And he's a single red zone target on the year. So not very encouraging in terms of like what he's actually commanding when he's on the field. What else we got in the wide receiver category? Jamison Crowder, he's up at wide receiver 20. Man, I'll just take the L on Crowder. He's really all they got there and he's doing good too. No Le'Veon Bell again. Have to think that the target share continues to ascend into the fucking heavens. At this point, it's 30.8%, number four in the NFL right now. So he's seeing targets at an elite level. And uh, Joe Flacco is in at quarterback again for week six. And we just saw Crowder have a big game with Joe Flacco in there. So I'm not really worried about that quarterback situation. So Crowder is a must-start wide receiver too. At this point, who else we got in the wide receiver situation? So in my rankings, basically what I'm going to be doing now is anyone who's like an injured questionable status. So right now, like DJ Chark with the ankle, Deontay Johnson with the bike, John Brown with the calf. I'm putting them at the bottom of my rankings. Again, available patreon.com forward slash BDG8. They will be live while you're watching this video. I'm putting them at the bottom of the rankings and I'm not factoring them in as if they're going to play. I'm not assuming they're going to play. So I'm doing my rankings based off of them not being in the game. Based off them not playing, and as we get new reports, questionable tags, they're going to be limited, they're going to be on a snap count, whatever, I will slowly increase them up the rankings. But for right now, we have a guy like DJ Chark going against Detroit, and he had the ankle injury last game. So I have LaVisca Chanel all the way up at wide receiver 28. I think he's a fine, fine flex play, wide receiver three play against Detroit. He's been getting the volume. He's been getting the workload. He's looked really, really good. And now we have a very good matchup against the Lions. So I like uh, LaVisca Chanel there. And then Keelan Cole, secondary guy. Uh, this is a stat per Mike Tagliere. He's seen at least five targets in every game this year. Yet the top 58 targets, but he scored three touchdowns and five targets in every game. So if DJ Chark misses time. Keelan Cole. I have my wide receiver 42, but like he's also a decent flex play, I think, that you can get into your lineup. And this is why I'm going to be attacking this game on monkeyknifefight.com. New game, top left. If you're not already signed up, this is the best player prop game website on the world. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit. You're going to get double whatever the you deposit okay you put down 10 you get 20 you put down 20 you get 40 you put down 50 you get 100 up to 50 dollars deposit we're gonna click on the little thing that looks like a football in the top left and you could play any game you want you could play houston tennessee you could do the entirety of the early games if you're new here's what you're gonna do we're gonna click detroit jacksonville i just the over under in this game is 54 and a half there's gonna be explosions everywhere it's gonna be explosions in jacksonville detroit in your wallets because of this game, in your pants because of this game, nobody's safe. No piece of clothing is safe. Nothing is safe. So there are a lot of options to choose from. As you can see on the top, there are a ton of game types, rapid fire, touchdown dance, more or less. And they're all prop games. So like y'all are probably better than me at this. We're going to go monster fire on this. And we don't know DJ Chark's status yet. So by the time you watch this, it's possible he's not at practice and they actually took the games with DJ Chark out of it so we're going to try to find ones with little 
non DJ Chark action, but he's in this one. Uh, get out of here, bro. All right, more or less 30x. The X on the top there, right here, is whatever money you throw down on this. That's how much money you'll make off of it. So if you throw down 10 on the 30x, you're going to win $300 if you get this all right. So we're going to go big. We're going to go huge on this one. We've got Matthew Stafford over under 282 and a half passing yards at Jacksonville. I'm actually going to go with less. I'm going to go with fewer. I don't know why. I feel like they might control the ground game, use a lot of clock, and Minshew and the Jaguars and the boys are going to roll over. We're going to go with over for Kenny Galladay, five and a half receptions. We're going to go over for James Robinson, 71 and a half rushing yards. He's going to get things bike on track there. I think we're getting a big game out of James Robinson. DJ Chark banged up. We're going to go less on the receiving yardage total line again they might take this game down by the time you see it but there's still a lot of fun games to play with that you can just check out on your own time you, i wouldn't trail me i really wouldn't trail me because i just get a little reckless with these things and i like to have fun and i like to try to win a lot of money 30x 30x and marvin jones no this is not the one i want to do we're going 15x where's where's tj hawkinson i guess we'll just go with this one fuck it fantasy points we're going Minshew. fantasy points we're going ooh, ooh, we're kenny g we're gonna go with james robinson fantasy points i don't love marvin jones but if dj chark is banged up we're gonna take the one and a half fantasy points plus on marvin jones and then we know your boy tj hawkinson is getting into the end zone so this will be our play of the day 8x 10 beans down on it 80 dollars bike in your wallet monkeyknifefight.com when you deposit 10 20 or 50 dollars all you got to do is use a promo code BDG when you do it, and you're getting double the amount. Guys, this is how we diversify the revenues. This is how we pay the mortgage, baby. Bike to the video. So I'm expecting big things from Jacksonville. I'm expecting, you know, good things from the Detroit side of the ball. So LaVisca's up there at wide receiver 28. We have T. Higgins going against Indy, who is probably taking over as the one on the outside, but he's going to have a tough matchup against Xavier Rhodes, who shut down the fucking streets this year, man. I like Preston Williams. I have him at wide receiver 34 going against the Jets. Weak-ass secondary. And Preston Williams kind of had his breakout, his, his, uh, his coming out party last week. Big game. Great matchup. Fitz is a god right now. So Preston Williams, almost a year removed. Almost a full year removed from the ACL tear, which I think probably factored into his slow start this year. Seems like he's coming around, uh, coming around a little bit. So I'm pretty high on Preston Williams this week. I think you can get him into your lineups. Christian Kirk at wide receiver 35 against Dallas. I'm not sold on Christian Kirk being the Christian Kirk that we think he's going to be, but flex play. Claypool, wide receiver 36. Debo, Ayuk, Hardman, 37, 38, 39. That's all I got. Uh, also, wait, one more. If John Brown's out again, Gabriel Davis versus the Chiefs at home. Phenomenal flex play. Phenomenal. Make sure Gabriel Davis is owned in every dynasty league. I can't imagine he's not owned at this point. But if he's not, pick his ass up in 12-team leagues. You could probably pick up Gabriel Davis and start him in the flex this week as well. One other thing I want to dive into with the tight ends is TJ Hawkinson. Quietly on pace for a big campaign. Big presidential campaign. You get my fucking vote in November. I'll tell you that. Everybody, make sure you go out and vote, please. If you want to change the country, it starts with us individually. Okay? Our generation is slow on this type of shit, unfortunately. We did not vote in the primaries which would have given us the options of the presidents that we actually wanted to see there and now we're all complaining like why is it joe biden or donald trump we don't like either of these fucking options well that's on us we should have voted originally okay but now we still have the chance to choose who we want to vote so get out there and vote if you don't like either of the options vote for fucking tj hawkinson all right i have tj hawkinson all the way up at tight end five this week it's going against the jaguars i like tj hawkinson the the four above him are in a complete tier of their own they're not even close the the, the tier gap between hawkinson and these guys is my roof to my ceiling pretty much but he's up at my five because the tight end landscape right now is horrible it's like i have to put zach Ertz at six there's like no other choice i it's horrible i wish i could skip six through ten and then just start ranking guys at eleven Unfortunately, they don't let you do that. Hawkins is at five. They're playing against the Jaguars, who have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to tight ends. They've allowed the third most receiving yards to tight ends, okay? He's only played on 72% of the team's snaps up to this point. But I think he came into the year at a little bit less than 100% with a foot-ankle issue that he was dealing with. And now they're coming off their bye. And I think they're ready to let him roll. I don't know if I'm convinced, but I feel good that they're going to be playing him at a higher rate after the bye, right? He's probably at full health now. His team is ready to roll. T. Hawkinson gets a bump up to an every down player. 
And TJ Hawkinson, quietly, most people have not really... I, I've heard so much negative about Hawkinson. Like, he's not getting enough play time. He's not getting this and that and that, whatever. I feel like he's been fine. Like, I own him in a couple leagues, and he's been producing 8 to 12 points almost every single week. On pace for 80 targets, 60 catches, 720 receiving yards, and 8 touchdowns. 67 28 is a phenomenal fucking year. Like, I don't know why people don't like TJ Hawkinson right now. I think great matchup, quietly involved. I'm in. I'm in on TJ Hawkinson, man. I'm in on him this week. So if you're desperate, like most of you motherfuckers are at tight end right now, TJ Hawkinson, great pivot play. Okay. TJ Hawk, tight end, guy I like this week. That's it. I think that's all I got. My throat's about to give out. Let me get some more sparkling ice. Getting on a big call in about an hour, starting to um, develop and plan the basics of our app. We will be launching an app later this year, probably in spring. We're hoping the launch date is going to be May 1st. We're taking our draft guide, draft guide that so many of you thankfully uh, supported the brand with and, and purchased this summer. We are taking that to the mobile screen. We're taking that into an app version. I've been using my whiteboard like crazy. I'm getting to the point where I fill it up and I need to take a picture and print it out so I don't forget any of the note, like legit. See, we bike. It's right there. Uh, so many fucking ideas for it. It's going to be the draft guide, but it's probably going to be the home base for a lot of the content that we put out. And I think we can integrate our Patreon stuff into there. Again, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. But the app's going to be fucking awesome. It's going to be fun. It's going to be engaging. We're going to be fucking around with some AR and VR type stuff, augmented and virtual reality in the app, man. Uh, so a lot of exciting stuff coming. Get on that call in an hour with my uh, my app developer, Mike. And that's it. So thank you all for joining me in today's featured film. If you want to join the live stream tomorrow, which I will post afterwards, but if you want to actually be in the live chat and ask me your sit star questions, sign up on patreon.com forward slash BDGE. You'll get the weekly rankings. You'll get the live stream. You'll get access to Discord. You'll get Dynasty rankings. You'll get a whole lot of shit. All right? That's it. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to his channel if you are new. Robert, thank you for editing this video. Make sure you're following him on Twitter. And I'm out. Mm -hmm.